Hello and uh, welcome back to another episode of The Huddle. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we're, <laughs> we're here in the building. This is Kalita, for those of you who don't recognize me, and I'm here with my co-host. Given Illustrative. Oh, come on now. Yeah, we're looking forward to today's conversation, getting into that uh, month of love, hey, the spirit Jesus. of the month of love. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a beautiful month for some people, and yeah. for some people, it's genuinely terrifying. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know, um, recently, I'm sure you've heard it, because it's been uh-huh. all over TikTok, all over YouTube shorts. Everything. Um, Miley Cyrus re- released a new song called Flowers. Mm-hmm. And, well. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, um, Miley Cyrus released a new a new song called Flowers. Okay. And um, in this um, song, she's basically doing a take on Bruno Mars's When I Was Your Man. Oh. You know, he oh. said, I... Um, I should have bought you flowers. I should have held your hand. Yeah. Should have gave yeah. you all my hours. So yeah. she's saying that I sh- I can buy myself flowers. Oh, I can wow. hold my own hand, talk to myself for hours essentially. And I thought that it was it was a very clever song, and um, it was a very big dig at her ex. <laughs> very big. Um, it has a hundred and sixteen. Did they used to date? Hey, bro, they were married. Are you serious? A whole marriage. Yo, 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 look at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, the, the internet's been going wild about that. Um, 116 million views on YouTube. Two weeks. Wow. Like, it's blowing up. Wow. It is absolutely blowing up. And it's crazy because I feel like th- before I checked this morning, it was like on 20 million views. And you're like, oh, that's a lot of views. Skyrocketing. Mm. And I just felt like the song is, it speaks volumes mm-hmm. on the the mentality that a lot of single females have. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is, I don't need a man. And I kind of understand where it comes from. But I wanted to ask you, like maybe from your perspective, because how I see it as, I feel like it's a lot of bitterness. That kind of mentality comes from like, being hurt yes and true. um so they're like ah, i don't need a valentine i'm independent and strong and i think i understand that you need to be okay with yourself if you are single in this period of time mm. and you know people are busy being in love and you want to also be in love but you can't because you're alone but i also i feel like there's a there's a healthy amount of of that that's needed and yeah. I think we've gone overboard. A healthy amount of? You know, I'm okay being single. Oh, okay, okay, I but understand. But not, yeah. I don't need a man. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, completely, completely. I I agree with you. Um, it's there's. I mean, this is the thing. I always say this, right? And I think I'm going to repeat it for a very long time. We as human beings struggle so much with striking a balance. Mm. Like we we always think that. Th- the thing is you know when especially when you've experienced a certain level of injustice mm. you feel like you need to turn up the volume in the resistance like mm. you need to resist to the point of being you know when audio is just terrible yes like and you're just ringing in people's ears mm. and i feel like that's 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 something that unfortunately a, a trap a lot of women have fallen into mm. um and god has always created us to be interdependent mm. like we and and it's sad it's so sad kelita like <laughs> i think about this often hey because mm. The world that we live in doesn't care about what God set as a standard. That's true. Right? So if you think about the way that we live now, and and I'll definitely get back to the Miley Cyrus, but I just want to lay this foundation Mm. first for the conversation as a whole. Absolutely. If you look at the when God made man, right, his his idea in in his, I don't even want to say his heart of hearts, but in his heart, God's intention was for us to be interdependent mm. and then man to be head and man to to love his wife, which mm. is a huge responsibility, mm. right? And then for the woman to be submissive towards the husband. And this is, this is not a, obviously over time, as a, a lot of people misinterpreted that. Yeah. It got misinterpreted in culture. It got misinterpreted in many different contexts. Because we're fallible. We're exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, here's the thing that breaks my heart even more. The fact that 
the 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 places where men have found themselves to be most useful the modern society has made those skills and those advantages that men used to have irrelevant mm. you see what i mean yeah like if you're going to come and say i'm important to society as a man mm. because i need to do the garden who still needs you I can mean, just go buy that thing that you just drive. Most people live in apartments. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> right? The majority, I mean, most people live in apartments. Most houses are small enough for you to just hire a gardener. You can so just put rocks. You can pave it. You understand <laughs> what I mean? You understand what yeah. I mean? And I'm saying this so as to have this conversation more holistically. Yes. So that we have a bit of an uh, 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 um, a full picture of what's actually happening uh, mm. with these minor things, right? Uh, in fact, this Miley Cyrus Bruno thing is reminding me of that old song, um, You Don't Mean It Now. You don't remember that, that song. song? No. It's uh, It has too many swear words, uh -oh. so I definitely can't. There's a lot of people <laughs> who know. What's his name? What's his name? The singer James Blunt. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. I don't need it now. Uh, 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 oh, uh, I know uh, that song. Yeah, that was I a song, song he wrote to his girlfriend, oh, his wow. ex-wife. And then his ex-wife wrote a song back to him. That's a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, so. you need to stop making those tracks, sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> Especially relationship, like, like centered so just tracks. Painful. Exactly. Like, just at least take your L. And, and bounce. And bounce, bro. Like, just <laughs> now you're blasting people on your... It's just messy. But anyway, yeah. we digress. Yeah, exactly. So I just wanted to paint that picture because I've been, I've been hearing a lot of women. Like, I've been engaged in a lot of those conversations. And it is true. Like, without a doubt, like, women are in a place now where... In, in obviously not everywhere. We mm. do have to acknowledge that. But women are in a place where you just get your own job, get your own car. If you need plumbing services, you will get a man, mm. but you don't need a, your, your man, man yeah. to do it, right? You are secure enough to afford yourself mm. a man. But I, I think there is a huge, and I'm going to speak also from the perspective of, you know, as a man, the one thing I can say that I know I will always need from a woman is I mean, like I'm talking now from a more biological standpoint, mm. like the thing that no one can argue. Yeah. Right. The fact that we will need always need each other. And I agree that probably to some degree, we will always need m women more in terms of procreation. Mm -hmm. Right. Ma birthing, mothering like that, that that skill. Will always be in demand. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> it will always be in demand, Never comrade. Like ay, 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 ay. that one, <laughs> that one, women, God gave you guys shem. It comes with a lot of inconveniences, pain, with discomfort, a lot of um, you know, having to take time off of work mm. and companies having to think, should we hire Maybe this one? Not. You know, it comes with a lot of that, but it's the most the most beautiful gift that any anyone can experience Absolutely. right exactly so I, I and i and i say that to have this to to paint a more holistic picture to say men don't have that yeah you understand i can't go to a womb donor <laughs> i mean you can <laughs> really surrogacy is a whole thing uh, you could pay someone to like get get an, a donor but you'd of still eggs be and then a get woman like though. yeah, but the same way we still need men okay, in the okay, sense of I like hear you, we need a I plumber. You. you know what I'm saying? I hear you. I hear you. I completely get what you mean. So I feel like in that in that space, right, is the space where we can all agree that we need women and women women need us. Yeah. But you also want to be needed in the things that aren't so, you know. Like something that's not so biological, mm. so it feels too. What's the word? What's the, the there are things that are, um, I don't want to say essential, but you know, you 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 wanna you wanna eat, but you also wanna play, have Primal. fun, relax. Yeah, it's more primary. Okay. Yeah, and and uh, it's I hate saying the others are secondary, but you wanna be be needed and important in other things as mm. well, like security. Yeah. Right, uh, which is another thing that men contribute a lot to relationships that yeah. can be overlooked. Yeah, um, there's security. There's a sense of just being the handyman around the house, but there's also the argument that women can just order a handyman or just do it themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But getting back into uh, specifically that Miley Cyrus thing, um, I have. I mean, no one can deny that there's this dumb 
war you know i'll, I'll call it a war mm. between men and women especially on social media mm. where I've, it's gone so far that i remember stumbling upon a short i think it was a short on youtube uh where someone was saying men like making an announcement a girl saying men we officially don't need you for your sperm because now they've the scientists have discovered that they can make sperm with bone marrow and I'm I don't like need any of that. So you're gonna use your bone marrow? Who's to bo- your own bone marrow? <laughs> I don't know how it works. How are the children gonna come out? I have questions. You first. understand what I mean? <laughs> and I, I wouldn't be shocked if this is a thing. I I don't understand the necessity of it though. Mm. But I wouldn't be. So I I find it so childish to be quite honest. Mm. And I I really ha- I'm seeing that human beings see it as a sign of weakness, which I feel like sure. is is more the way the direction of the conversation should go, right? We see needing each other as a weakness, sure. and that's the problem. Sure. You know what it is? It's um, an unwillingness to be vulnerable. Mm. And I think, um, I think vulnerability has got a bad rep because that obviously is seen as weakness in our society. But I think it takes a great amount of strength to show your vulnerabilities to people. Yes. And I think in a relationship, um, it's just so amplified. Like you literally the giving yeah, yeah. you literally giving this person every ap- opportunity, every piece of um what is that thing? Armory that yes. they need yes. to like yes. destroy you completely and trusting trusting that that person will not hurt you. Mm. And again, bringing back to what I said, people are fallible. Like, unfortunately, even if you are in a healthy relationship, you're married and you're doing God's work, you're in a place where you're in God's will, there will be a um, a struggle in that regard because you know this person is not perfect. Mm. They will at some point disappoint you. Not maybe intentionally, but they will hurt you. Maybe again, not intentionally. But whenever you're dealing with humans, we always have in the back of our head, this person can hurt me. Exactly. And I think us saying So that better safe than sorry. Exactly. Yeah. I'd rather stay by myself mm. and keep all my wor- my my walls um up in that regard. But I think there's just a lot of beauty that we miss in um closing ourselves off from intimacy and this is not just only in relationships but i think also just in friendship um if you've been hurt in friendships before as well you miss a lot if you're not willing to be vulnerable with your friends because um they have stuff to offer you you know Mm. we've been built in a community for a reason Mm. um it's funny because the first okay you know what i'm just not gonna say it but (laughs) (laughs) joseph solomon once said yeah um that God, he basically works on us as individuals, but we were made for community. The gifts of love, the gifts of peace and um, righteousness is supposed to be worked out in community. It's not about, yeah, I have the Holy Spirit's love and joy and peace and it's just for me. Mm. It's about the community experience because you build each other up. You, you, um, you make each other grow. Mm. And I think... Having that mindset of I don't need men, I'm never going to get married, I don't need no man, I don't want to be in a relationship, I'm just going to be single all my life, mm. from a place of bitterness is is so detrimental. Mm. Because I think you're closing yourself off of an experience of love and an experience of growth um, in such a unique and intimate way um, without, you know, like for no reason. Yeah. Because you just won't heal from the traumas that you've had before not to say that they're not valid but heal you Mm. know don't Mm. just bleed for the rest of your life go get it fixed exactly go get it stitched go get it cleaned out and and also realizing that not all men i know we say this a lot yes but i think the problem that i fundamentally have with that that logic Mm -hmm. is it paints all men are like this Exactly. exactly and i think um what we need to remember is not all men. And sometimes we also need to ask the question is that the question we need to ask ourselves sometimes is maybe it's just the men I pick. Mm, mm. You know, I think I can definitely say, um, because now we're taking it from the conversation of the reason why Mm. women don't want to be found needing men Mm. um, is because they feel like this person is going to hurt or break me. Mm. Right. 
Um, and and it, 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 it is true that especially more, you, f- you, c- you do find a lot of men messing up quite a lot, right? Mm. And I'm saying that for to make this point. I remember having a conversation with a colleague and we were talking about how they've lived at two different places and I've lived at two different places and actually probably more, th- more than that. And in every place I've lived, there's always been a, an abuse issue, some mm. guy overpowering a woman physically. Mm. Um, and, and, and that is something, I don't know, it, it, the, yes, South Africa specifically does have a huge problem ab- uh, with that. Um, and obviously that's not what we're zooming into in particular. Yeah. Here's what I've noticed though. There are, what tends to happen is there are a lot of men who screw up but I've learned w- with m- a lot of women, they don't realize, and this is quite honestly something that I realized over time, right? Mm. Like they don't realize that they're living vicariously through other women's experiences. Ooh. Literally, we had this conversation with a colleague <laughs> and she, s- she, she told me that a, the, a, a family member of hers decided that the, ne- the guy she was going to be with, she was going to show him that he's not the the high horse, Mm. right? Because of an experience of a friend of hers with a separate guy. And even she admits that that guy was a sweetheart. So that's another thing, Guti. For a man to have a flaw, it's like men are like this. I always Mm. knew you were going to prove yourself, you were going to prove me right. Mm. But for women, women, men are are guilty till proven innocent. Whereas women have to prove themselves guilty. Sure. You first have to prove yourself guilty. Sure. You understand? And it's a terrible world to live in where you're constantly being suspected of, you know, I'm even afraid to greet people's children. I won't lie to you. This is an honest sure. fear of mine. Like, I always try There's my always best. That thing. Yeah, like when a kid comes to play with me, I'm like, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> go to your mom. <laughs> go to your mom. I ain't trying to catch a case. <laughs> Here's the thing I don't want us to be ignorant of, though. We need to also. Ag- look into the fact that Hollywood does ca- tends to do this thing on purpose mm. where they create I won't say that it's a false beef but they know the beef will make them money exactly they know the beef will make them money and what's sad is that the result is are you is you making a conclusion drawing a conclusion that mm. vale, yeah I need to harden myself against a man that is so true and I think um, I was actually having this thought a, a while ago maybe like a few days ago and um, really our experience is shaped by what we see, but our experience is so limited that we often don't have the right scale of a problem, if mm. that makes sense. Mm. So, for example, let me try and get something benign as an example, but let's say um, I always see red cars, right? Because that's my experience and maybe every video that I watch is a red car, I can say, 95% of the people in this world are driving red, red cars. cars. But the reality is, if I go and check the statistics, maybe the statistics say a completely different story yeah. than what I've visually seen. I understand right? what you mean. And I think the media does that to us a lot. Yes. I think the amount of um, movies where where men are demonized and men are seen as, you know, the players or the people who are, you know, breaking hearts Mm, is mm. that's our experience because we've watched it. Mm. And I think sometimes our brain doesn't recognize the difference between reality and movies. I I agree. I think it's And I think that's a scientific fact. Yeah. Yeah, That is a scientific fact. Your body reacts the same way. Like you do. And the thing that's unfortunate, what what makes us get to a point where we think that we've learned to disassociate is because we become desensitized, right? Mm. So you don't respond as you used to mm. to the things. Like some people can watch scary movies and, and just not flinch. And then go outside and see a cat. <laughs> 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 right? There is definitely a degree to which your your brain doesn't doesn't m- separate. Also considering the fact that the mind there's a, an experiment that that was done it's called the exposure effect mm. the more because i feel like that's what media does right it gives us the the uh, the in in, in 
uh, are repercussions of the exposure effect. Mm -hmm. You can, if the more you expose something to someone, they will either grow positive or negative emotions to it, depending on the context under which it, it was, it's been exposed. That makes sense. Marketing has learned this very well. Like Fanta, I think, did an experiment where at the Super Bowl, instead of being loud and putting up their ads all over and being in your face, mm. they put subtle marketing under the seeds, mm. places where you, you know you mm. saw it, but you can't say where. Yeah. Yeah, like their sales during that Super Bowl skyrocketed. That's so there's a huge, lots of money go into studying the exposure effect. Sure. How can we expose things to people in such a way that they create, they, 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 they encourage the behavior that we want? Mm. Lots of money goes be into that, right? So now you can imagine with us being exposed to a lot of the stuff that happens in media. Yeah, where and people social media. Yeah, so the exposure effect is something that works on every one of us. Mm. There's a reason why marketing puts so much money behind it right yeah. so then which then brings us to the question of what are you exposing what are you exposed most to sure hollywood telling you know showing you videos of women dancing and pushing men away mm. and you don't know when she gets home mm. how she truly interacts with her husband come on now <laughs> right you don't know what happens when she gets home because that's another thing i remember um, speaking to, we're going to make this very brief, speaking to a girl who, like, she had a terrible experience with a guy once, mm. and then she just decided men she's not going to trust. Here's the sad part. She had, she confessed herself that her father was the best. Oh, wow. Whenever she needed a weave, whenever she needed something for her hair, her nails, he'd go out and buy it for her. Oh, man. Right? And and he he's, he's passed on now. Sure. But you understand to have lived your life as that good of a man mm. and your, 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 your child, your legacy, deciding that men like you don't exist. You understand what she I mean? Said you are a figment of my imagination. Yo! Yo! That's basically what she's saying. <laughs> that is so intense. Exactly. And it it really it really sure. needs we really need to think about this thing we're doing where we're we're making the idea of needing each other. We're turning it into a weakness and something to be shamed. Mm. I mean, there was this uh, Lira once posted that she submits to her man. Ah, uh, and the not Fire thing. was thrown at that woman. And Lira is a Christian woman. Imagine. You understand Just what I'm saying? That you submit to what your Bible is telling you to do. Imagine. Gandhi. And this you, your choice. No one forced, no one forced her to forced do you. it. And she was attacked. Madness. <laughs> it's absolute madness. But you know what it is. It just reminded me um, of the, the Garden of Eden. And after this, the fall, God curses even Adam. Mm. And he says to the woman, he said... Um, this is Genesis 3, verse 16. I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor will you give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Mm. And I think that's what we're seeing playing out mm. over and over again is deep down, yes, you may be saying, I don't want to have a man, but your desire is to is have for, a husband. Exactly. And um, unfortunately, on the other side, he will rule over you. It's that mm. um, it's that imbalance of power, that 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 headship that has gone too far, that yes. is now abuse. Yes, yes. And um, you know, yeah, I think that's just very interesting. But yeah. I do have another question mm -hmm. because yeah, we've been talking about this, and I think we've 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 diagnosed the problem pretty efficiently yeah. but i think maybe what are some practical things because this is not just only for single ladies sorry guys we leave you out a lot hey <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> we're also talking to you hey like they're gonna be a bunch of single people mm. on valentine's day right and as we've been talking about hollywood pushes this thing i know there are gonna be 55 new movies about love true tomorrow very true dropping and you're gonna watch these things we've watched these things for years now we have an expectation of what valentine's day and love and stuff is supposed to be like mm. and um how are we for us people who are single how do we navigate this this season responsibly and 
um yeah responsibly mm. how mm. do we get through this season without feeling like we're drowning yeah i get you in sappiness look the first thing you can do is just get off of social media because most mm. of what you feel is not something you would feel if it were not um provoked in in you within you you understand i think to be to be quite honest we don't realize the extent to which some of the desires we have and desire is not a crime mm. i need to make that clear desiring to be married desiring to be with someone that's not a crime at all mm. but being g- being given the sense of especially feeling lonely mm. especially feeling like you need someone during valentine's day this is it it Basically what I'm saying is don't take for granted the extent to which social media has an influence on you. Absolutely. Yeah, lo- there's a lot of people who have been wanting to get married and you know how you feel when you get on social media and mm. you see all these people. All the reels. All the reels. I don't want to <laughs> talk. <laughs> all the things you understand. We've been through. You understand. <laughs> like literally those those are things that you need to be very careful of. I know it sounds it sounds like a, ch- a, a cop-out, mm. like like you're taking the easy way out. It might be necessary just to regulate yourself. Yeah. Like just give yourself time on and then be intentional about your time off. Absolutely. Yeah, because social media... So the thing that, that sucks is if the, if the feeling of or sense of urgency to be with someone was really yours mm. and it like really, really yours, you'd feel it whether you're on or off social media. Come on media, now. Right? That. <laughs> that. Right? Exactly. Yes, sir. So those are other things that you need to monitor that what is this something that was actually sort of r- smeared onto you mm. or it rubbed off of you because of what you're exposing yourself to. So good. Exactly. So that's the first thing I would absolutely advise. Like just distance yourself. Switch off. Yeah, just switch off, honestly. Then you'll come back when everything settles down if you want to come back. But even then, I would definitely advise regulating Mm. um, over time, being intentional about it. And then there are other things, right? I feel the, the, um, the conversations that you have, because the things that influence us the most, it's social media does a better job than our friends do. Come on. But our friends are the second second line of attack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Our friends influence us as well. Mm. The conversations that we have with them. Not to say that there's anything wrong with a friend constantly going on about, oh, me and my man. Oh, we did this. Oh, we did that. <laughs> <laughs> There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, right? But those conversations can make you desire yeah. even more. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And here's the thing, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-oh. Truth bomb. Never make the mistake of thinking you you can handle desire till forever. <laughs> you you can step on any flame and you'll never get bent. Hey. Uh-uh. Don't overestimate. Mm. You know your your the degree to which you are able to withstand. I don't want to even call it temptation at this point because yeah. that's not necessarily the conversation we're having. This is a conversation of being in a space where everybody is flaunting yes. what they have. Yes. Re- whether it's going to last, it has longevity Whatever. or not. Yeah. It's just being in your face. I got him last week. <laughs> Listen, I want you to know. We got together I yesterday. I want you to know. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, we are going to point. paint your your feed red. Eh. <laughs> Everybody's going to know about me. You know what I mean? Going to post flowers exactly. that I bought myself and said that it was from my boyfriend, but that's none of my <laughs> business. You know, I think the other thing, the other practical thing that I would like to add is also just spending time like on the day go out. Mm. I think it's very healthy for you to have friendship um time you know <laughs> with yourself <laughs> with your friends with yourself oh. like uh, i'm actually planning i told my mom i was like yo can we do like a galentine's day thing so like we get like moms and daughters and have like a oh. a, a thing you know yeah yeah that would have been cute or going out with your friends who are single as well mm. i think that's a good day like try make sure that you're happy on the day yeah. Because if you're going to be miserable and alone, it's just going to make the day worse. worse. You know what I'm much, saying? Much, much worse. Just go out and have fun. Do something that's fun for you. Go out, watch a m- mm, Maybe don't watch a movie. But because you're likely Listen, to. Listen, you're going <laughs> to run into all the couples. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But 
do something that's fun for you do something with your friends explore do something have an experience you know um and enjoy that time mm. you know i remember when i was in high school we i went to a christian school so we didn't have valentine's day so um we had friendship day instead of valentine's day and i remember just the feeling cuz i was always single okay i had my first boyfriend at like 23 Mm, mm, <laughs> wow yeah yeah it's been a minute <laughs> um <laughs> and i remember always sitting there because you know people would send flowers and chocolates and what and you're just sitting there like ish man i know my name will not be called on this day <laughs> and i experienced that all throughout high school and oh, you know what it really one. does suck yeah, it yeah. does suck but i must say that when I got out of that experience, like to be like, oh man, it's another Valentine's Day. People are going to get flowers. My friends are going to have like four bouquets of flowers, 15 chocolates and uh, balloons. Mm, and, mm. you know, just, I think that's the thing. Mm. It's comparison. They say comparison is the thief of joy. I think if you're going to go into the season or it's basically a season. It's basically a season. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. As a single person, I think most of us are not going to be single forever. Yeah. So just rest assured that in God's timing, that will change, mm. you know, and be okay with who God has created you to be now. Be okay. And I think also it hinges on people have their identities in their, sp their relationships. Yes, I agree. And I agree. their status with relationships yes if you're gonna put your identity in being with a man you are going to see flames mm, mm. because that man can disappoint you tomorrow that's a very true story and i think once you're okay with yourself and who you are in christ and who god has made you to be as an individual and i think that's what it is we just want to run away because we don't want to be with ourselves and deal with the problems that we have by ourselves no be okay with you. Deal with the issues that you have as an individual. Be happy with yourself. Mm. Strive to live a life where you are satisfied who, with who you've become and satisfied how God has made you just as an individual. And then you can enjoy the community. And when the time is right, you can enjoy the husband or the spouse or the wife that you have. And don't run away from that by jumping into relationships because you don't want to be with yourself, by yourself. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Yeah, your time that's will a, come. That's a very good point here. I, I actually realized that there's a, a dynamic of this that I didn't uh, think of as you were speaking, right? Um, Gana, what, what, what did, you, did you speak of? Um, there's something you mentioned that, that made me realize when I went, ah, oh, there's also that. The Valentine's Day thing where people would bring flowers in school? No? Yes, yeah? yes, 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 yes. So I spoke of social media, right? Mm. And I didn't, it, uh, and I suppose it's because I'm not in sp a lot in spaces that do that. Mm. Uh, but there's also that desire that's triggered by the fact that you're just surrounded by people who are being living expressed. the experience, yeah. right? Exactly. Like they just have, uh, should we say love expressed to them? Like or <laughs> grand gestures. Yes, more yes, of, yeah. yes, yes. Grand gestures. Um, I, I, that's a very difficult one, right? I would, I would say in a, in a case like that, because the thing of getting off of social media is different from don't go to church because mm. they might be. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? There's a very different way to handle that. Mm. I think in that regard, you're gonna have to soldier soldier it on, right? Yeah. You're gonna have to weather that storm. Yeah. Uh, definitely, because I'm specifically thinking of a time I actually ended up stopping where I, I remember sending uh, my partner flowers at work. Um, it was a long time ago, mm. though, like years ago now. And then they, and, uh, I basically found a, one of her colleagues and snuck in holding the flowers and, and gave them to her and then yeah. walked out with her. And then after that, now everyone is asking, where are the flowers? <laughs> So I literally created pressure for myself. And mm. from that point on, I just stopped. Yeah. I just I just stopped. Because she was having people project their, um, you know, their expectations onto her. Mm. You understand what I mean? Exactly. Mm. So I think per personally, particularly f in, in that context, during that season, just weather the storm. Yeah. 
honestly speaking, some things we just have to be mature about. And just be okay. Yeah, yeah. You just need to be mature. It's actually much like it happens with women who are struggling to have kids and they are in a room mm. where Everyone's women are celebrate, sp- celebrating their children, showing each other pictures. It's a very painful time. Mm. And it's important mm. for you to understand that they're not doing it to you. Yeah. Right? They're just enjoying the experience. Yes. And yeah. it's, it's, it, it, you just can't help but assume or feel it's, it's our emotions are so fickle. Mm. Like just feel like they're doing it because you're in the room. Mm. It's like all of a sudden now I'm here and now we're talking about lovey dovey. Where did I enter? You know what I mean? Exactly. That's true. So I would quite honestly say prepare yourself mentally for that because mm. you might find yourself in context where people are just celebrating each other. Come on. Yeah. And as a result of celebrating each other, you will find that you will feel like you are being sort of like, yeah, da, 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 da. Mm. you're the one who doesn't have. So you're going to have to weather that storm. And I would quite honestly recommend, sh- I, alwe- I always love using the term echo chamber. But I love the thing you're talking about of just going to be by yourself, taking yourself out for dates and having fun. Um, be with your friends because mm. they remind you that you're not alone. Yeah. Uh, because we can easily slip into sort of like taking a situation that's here mm. and then escalating, dialing it up. Exactly. We're very good at that. Unfortunately, our 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 um, I want to say our natural body, our natural brain mm. is very good at doing that. Mm. Uh, but I love the idea of focusing attention on yourself. Mm. I really, really love that. Yeah. Mm. And I mean, you know, celebrate love. You yes. know, yes. I think the the sometimes the best way to get over a jealousy is to celebrate the person who's actually doing well. Mm, you know, mm, um, mm. just because my friend got a car and I don't get to get a, a new car yes. does not mean that I shouldn't celebrate her. You know, sometimes when you celebrate, I don't know if you've experienced this, yeah. but I'm going to make it super spiritual and bring it back. <laughs> Have you ever been like in a, such a low place? And you just decided, you know, I'm going to praise God, like with everything that I have. Mm. And you go and you praise, you put that worship music, you blast it, you are jumping. And you come out of that experience feeling like that wasn't so bad. Oh, I think that's almost the same concept uh, that I'm trying to get across with with celebrating this. Celebrate your friends Mm. who are having a really good relationship, a healthy relationship, and their love, their love is being expressed in a romantic gesture um celebrate that mm. you know be happy for them because guess what you want to be the person if that was happening to, to you, you that people would celebrate exactly. the love that you're experiencing exactly. as well yeah and i yeah. think that's incredibly important mm. Yeah, I think this conversation's been really long. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely has been, yeah. But it's it's definitely a necessary one. Mm. Um and I th- it's it it can be taken for granted just what people go through, mm. especially when it's something you 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 truly desire, right? Mm. Because Christ does mention um and it we re- it's, it's words that really need to be remembered because sometimes I feel like even the church itself can treat people as though they can turn certain desires off. Mm. Like we really, really, I do agree that the world can turn on certain desires and amplify them. Yes. Right. Uh, Let me not say turn them on as much as uh, unnecessarily amplify them. Mm. I do. And I've have seen that even in myself. Um, Certain spaces of media can do that. Mm. Um, But at the same time, we do need to remember that like when Christ said there are some that are born not wanting to get married yeah. and some the world makes them that way yeah. and others just want to do it yeah. right obviously he's speaking more for the because of the question they asked him he's speaking more to the fact that mm. some are just born that way yeah. and they are uh, some decide to be that way mm. uh, for the sake of the kingdom and yes. others the world turns them into people who just don't want to be with mm. someone and in him mm. making that argument he's also saying there are those who are just born wanting to mm. You understand? Mm. It's a desire that you have and the world shouldn't condemn you for that. Yeah. Mm, the thing that we just need to learn to do is just to be mature, brittle ourselves, mm. brittle our thoughts mm. and learn to. And, and I, I I have to say, like, based on so many things that I've desired in life that other people have, I can absolutely relate to that feeling of, mm. you know, I want this and you have it and you're annoying me <laughs> <laughs> for having it. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I can't say that. Right, exactly. So I'm just going to be here exactly. smiling like this. Exactly. Smiling like someone pinched my bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, mm. it's it's just, it's it's a difficult period of time. But I think definitely all the trials that we go through make us stronger at the end. Uh, James says, consider it great joy whenever you go through trials. Yes. For it is an opportunity for your, your faith to grow. And so look at this season, if it is really testing you as an opportunity, as an opportunity to grow. Mm. And if you really need to buy yourself flowers to make yourself get through this season, go ahead and do that. Um, <laughs> and that's all from us. Thank you so much for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs> Peace out.